If you like your racing fast and furious, hold tight. We're back at Clay Pigeon Raceway in Dorchester for the second running of the Rotax Festival. And with the club chairman here at Clay Pigeon Cart Club, Paul Skip. And Paul, uh, Rotax Festival won last year. Uh, entries in the mid 80s. Entries today, 112, looking good. Yes, very good. Uh, it's growing all the time. We're getting a lot of good interest in it. And uh, we've still got potential to grow more. We've already set the dates for next year. It'll be the third weekend of August next year. That date is already in the calendar, so we know it's going to go ahead. Okay, and. Um the club meetings as well, if you go back to the sort of worst times in karting possibly two or three years ago, yeah. they've bounced back as well. I think you were sort of in the 70s and you're now around about the 100. Yeah, we were in the probably the high 70s a few years ago. Now we're getting up to the 100 and it's still a lot of interest. Um, unfortunately this year there's not many new people taking out arts tests, but it's still growing and we're still getting people coming. Okay, and some nice prizes on offer, as we can see, for each of the winners today. We've got a uh, uh, Rotax engine for each of the winners. And uh, nice to see you've got a, a bag and a shirt for each of our crew. Lovely, because uh, we, we like prizes. Um, this is uh, Jensen Button's home track as well, isn't it? He, he yes, raced here originally back in the day. This He lived, lived locally. Yeah. Nice of you to come back, Jensen, by the way, next year and present the Rotax trophies. I know he watches on YouTube. so We'd love to see him here at the Rotax Festival. Uh, and we'd love to see him back here to open up this fantastic building, which would be new to him because obviously we didn't have this at the time. Uh, so, uh, yes, if you're listening, Jensen, please do come on back. First finals coming up today are for the Minimax class. Uh, racing in that class is Sean Cuss who joins me. Now, Sean, you had a bit of an injury uh, recently. I think you're recovered now, but what happened? Uh, so a couple of meetings ago, I uh, got into a collision at the first corner of the track because it gets quite congested on the start. And we went three wide into the first corner and the person on my inside just touched my side pod, went up and landed on the steering wheel on my hand and I got a spiral fracture in my arm. Okay, you're recovered now though. Uh, I know you must be because I think you're running fourth in the British Championship so far this year. Yeah, that's true, it's all better now, yeah. Okay, and this weekend, how are you looking? Uh, definitely on the pace. In that last heat, I got faster sector one and faster sector two. So I just need to get the places done. And uh, I want to ask you um, uh, on a subject that's quite topical at the moment. You've got the front nose cones, the drop-down nose cones. From a driver's perspective, from your point of view, you were talking about the incident at Billy's Blind. When we were here last time, Billy's Blind used to be mayhem through that first corner. Now, last time we were here, we never saw one incident. Are you in favour of the drop-down nose cones or not? And for those of you watching around the world, basically there's a bracket on the front of the cart if somebody runs into somebody and that nose cone gets pushed back on the bracket, it's an automatic 10 second penalty. Now, people argue, and as I would, that you should be able to appeal that. But generally, what's your view on the drop down nose cones? Well, personally, I haven't had many not to jinx it, but sometimes there's a lot of vary in how hard it is to drop them down. So maybe if people get more of a close eye on when the bumper was dropped, it would make a lot uh, of an improvement on so how they give the penalty. Yeah, so basically you're saying there should be an appeal system, which there isn't at the moment. It's an yeah. automatic penalty, no appeal. Because uh, earlier, one of my teammates, he uh, dropped a bumper simply just by hitting a curb too hard. And yeah. that's an automatic 10 second penalty. Yeah, we saw somebody leading the British Championships last year from start to finish, never hit anybody, and, and ended up with a 10 second penalty. Okay, well, nice to speak to you. Hopefully you go well today. Let's have a look at that mini max final. It's going to be a really interesting one, this. From the front of the grid, it's going to be a very big talent list. 
Barthorpe and Gornall from Sean Cuss and Callum Voisin, Archie Kitching and Chris Simpson from Ollie Tyler and Jordan Morris. Rounding out that top ten, we've got Juan Wananiki and Ethan Leader, Sutherland Murphy, Reese Hurd, Brandon Klein Nagelvort from Treyhorn down in 15th on the grid. Keep an eye on him, the English E plate. Amelia Nelson from Reynolds, Todd, Wass and Martin. This is going to be a very interesting Minimax final in the Rotax Festival 2018. Is this going to go the way of Barthorpe? Could Voisin get himself into the mix? This is going to be a really strong start and it is a clear getaway from from the front, no problem at all for Barthorpe. He launches into the lead. Sean Cuss is going to try and hold off the attentions of Kitching and Gornall as they go side by side. Kitching's going to get up the inside into third position through the S's. And already a very quick start from Brody Trainhorn. He's made up about three or four places, and that is Kitching being passed again by Gornall. So Gornall back in a third position, no problems at all on this first lap. Miles Barthorpe already pulling away. He is on fire this weekend, Jake. I say this weekend, this season, I interviewed him earlier, he is doing amazing stuff and I'm really pleased for him, I did a promotional film for him years ago when he was trying to raise the money to get into the Super 1 British Guardian Championships, didn't get the money then but he's played his trading club meetings, come into Super 1 this year and is setting that championship on fire indeed as he has been here all weekend. So Barthorpe is your leader from Cuss, Gornall, Kitching, Voicing, Morris up to sixth place. He made some good moves on the first lap. Tyler, Chris Simpson and Brody Treyhorn up into ninth place. Watch, he watch for the English champion. When did he start down in 15? Very, He's already, very where is he, ninth already? He made up six places on lap one. Yep, really good performance from Brody Treyhorn. What I'm finding interesting, I have to say, over the course of this weekend, watch as these guys come through. Third and fourth, Gornall and Kitching are in the same outfit but they have gone for different front fairings. I found that very interesting. Some drivers decide they've gone for this new Nassau uh, on the top end. The uh, others have gone old school. It's very interesting to see that some teams have just gone completely for the new one or completely stuck to the original, but some are making split decision depending on the preferences of the drivers. There's a move there for uh, fifth place. That's Morris. Six to fifth. Morris up the inside and oh. also Brody Trayhorn on the move. There's another move and Brody Trayhorn there's got a contact warning. Top left of your screen, just under the Rotax sign. The uh, warnings will come up there. So Trey Horn has obviously had a little bit of contact on the way through. Just see him go through the picture there. Yep, ninth the position. E ninth position he is at the moment. Just a whisker in front of Reese Hurd up the inside. That looked like a move was happening for Chris Simpson on Jordan Morris. Didn't quite happen. Now he's got to shake off the attentions of Callum Voisin. Voisin's going to try and make a move, but that is Trey Horn. Diving up the inside, I think, of Ollie Tyler to get the move done. Tyler's resisting, but that's nicely finished off there from Treyhorn to get himself into eighth place. And then it's going to be Reese Hurd having a go at Ollie Tyler. In behind him, we've got Ethan Leader and Nicole Sutherland. All of those guys in about four seconds deficit to the race leader. Barthorpe, though, controlling the pace. A second and a quarter away from the rest. Cuss has now got Kitching in third place, who's got back into that third position on Sam Gornall. You can tell the difference between those two. They've got identical coloured carts, but Kitching's got the old fairing. Sam Gornall's got the new one. Yeah, some people are talking about the uh, new fairings. I think you mentioned it, Jake. They think that the new fairing is worth, what, a tenth of a second a lap or something? I think that's absolute nonsense myself. Well, in the faster classes it is, in an OK or in a KZ, it would be, but... <laughs> it's just not convinced, to be honest. It's a very interesting way of going about it, because some have gone for the new uh, Nassau, others haven't. But watch Treyhorn. He's now right in the back of Callum Voisin. He is really stepping up the attack. Now he's gone into eighth place. He's going to make that dive at the inside. I think he made the move there into the right-hander. Is he through? Yes, but Voisin is hanging back, trying to come straight back at him, and he has got through into the S's. So Voisin is the first person, really, to hold a candle to Treyhorn. But Treyhorn gets straight back up the inside into the hairpin just as Boysin was saying, stop overtaking me, let's work together. He's never going to do that. Seventh place then for the E-plate, the English champion. Great pictures here from the drone. This is the first time we've ever had a drone at an MSA event here at Play Pigeon. Thanks to the MSA, the clerk of the course, the steward, for uh, all playing ball and helping us to get that job done. Uh, we're not uh, flying around the track as sometimes we do, but it does give you a really nice overall view of the action at the top end of the circuit. You really pick out your favourite drivers. Right, interesting. There's a warning that's gone out to Sam Gornall. You can see it on the top left hand, just under the Rotax logo. Sam Gornall has been given a warning. Now, he's battling away, of course, with Archie Kitching and trying to close up on Sean Cuss. But 
he's been given a warning now for contact, so I didn't see anything too untoward there, but apparently it was just a little on the nose, so he's had a warning, he's not going to get a penalty, but uh, he just needs to keep an eye on it. As he looks over his right shoulder, Jordan Morris and Chris Simpson are bearing down on him, and he's got uh, Brody Trahorn now in seventh position, he'll be trying to close in. Sean Cuss is now the head of the Trulli train, isn't he? He's the cork in the bottle, holding up these two behind him. He's the championship leader here as we interviewed him earlier. You saw that interview with Sean. He leads the championship here. But the man out front, Miles Barthorpe, with a 1.47 lead as he crossed the line last time, he leads the British championship. As I said earlier, he's a man on fire this season, and just carrying on the good form this weekend. Yeah, I love these events, the Rotax Festival in particular, because you get the circuit specialists, the class specialists, and the British Championship specialists. Great to see, and up the inside, a big move from Kitching. That's enough for Gornall to get a switch by at the inside as well. So Kitching to second, Gornall to third, Cuss in fourth position. Now, can he fight back? Has he got the power in that car to be able to move slightly further forward? Because sometimes setup really counts for a lot. And these two seem to have made light work of him once they found the gap. Both managed to get through and keep an eye on Jordan Morris there in fifth position. He may get a chance to go for Sean Cuss. He'll have seen how those two did it to get into second and third. And he'll want, right, I want a piece of that. Off the final turn, down the main straight, through that flat on the throttle left-hander. That's such a tough corner, that one. Brody Trahorn bearing down on Chris Simpson. He's four seconds off the lead, but still going strong. Tyler and eight from Sutherland now, who's up to 12th play, uh, 10th position. Good work from Nicole. Then it's Hurd, leader, Murphy. Uh, then we've got Brandon Klein, Reynolds, Todd, Wass, Martin, Nelson, and Mwaniki, who is down to 20th. Those four battling for second place on that last lap was worth half a second on that lap to Miles Barthorpe, of course, as they're overtaking, they're slowing themselves down as they're taking the not the correct racing line, they're taking an overtaking line, which is not the best or fastest way around the track, so that allowed the leader to get another half a second out front and he's two all the twos clear now 2.22 for miles barthol and sam gonnell is not making that move on archie kitching isn't he he's going to sit behind him and try and work him slightly further forward towards miles barthol otherwise all they're going to be bidding for in this race is second place but with eight and a half minutes on the clock it's a massive lead miles barthol has got i'm not sure he's going to lose that one yes yeah, a long race this one this weekend 15 minutes and a lap only four classes here of course uh, this weekend we're running so uh, the club able to uh, give, make the races that much longer. 12 minutes in a lap of the British Championships due generally to the number of entries and number of classes. But uh, 15 minutes and a lap is, uh, well, I'm not going to say it's old school, because if you go old school in the days of Jensen Button, 15 laps would have been uh, a long race, to be honest. But uh, this is a fairly short circuit. It's only 850 metres and change. But it doesn't feel like that, does it? When you look at it, if you look at it here from the drone, it looks like quite a big circuit, but it, it's it's well shorter than a lot of the others. It's around about a 35, 36 second lap, I think. Absolutely, and it's a very technical lap as well because you've got one or two very fast sweepers with some really tight hairpins that you've got to carry the speed through. I think Gornal is getting impatient, sat behind Kitching. Now he's going to go for it, and Cuss is going to get through as well. Is that enough for Jordan Morris to tuck oh, in up the inside? Cuss. Oh. oh, abracadabra magic from Sean Cutter. That's beautiful. Through from to our two places, fourth to second, absolutely stunning. Well, that was an easy one to make a gap on initially. As up the inside comes Morris, he gets past Gornall and gets up into uh, fourth position. And that's going to tag 43 Simpson and Trey Horn onto the back. We're going to get a great battle for the final two steps of the podium now. But Sean Cuss, clearly that's what track knowledge does. He knows where the grip is better than some of the others. Now Gornall's going to go for the move. Kitching's going to come back and Cuss. He gets in a second. Gornall's through in a fourth on Morris. And is that enough for Trehorn to come through? Yes, it is. In a fifth position. Trehorn now up into fifth. From 15th. Cracking racing. Forget the leader. We're not going to see much of you, Miles Barthorpe, you, uh, you boring young man. <laughs> allowing uh, getting in a way like that. We're not going to follow you. We're going to follow this battle. Six cars in it now. Fantastic action. Yeah, Sean Cuss is going to get frustrated, sat in second and uh, third position. Sorry, it's easy to say it's second position with Barthorpe so far out in front. But there they come once again. Trehorn now on the back of this queue. Gornall's going to make his bid for Cuss. He's going to try and get up the inside. But again, beautiful defence from Cuss. The door left slightly open as Trehorn tries to knit it up the inside. A warning goes up for Chris Simpson, who's now at the back of this.
this queue as a warning. Here comes Cuss up the inside of the hairpin. He's going to make it stick on uh, Kitching. And now Gornel's going to try and start up the inside. He's not going to make that work. Trehorn, the door is left open. And so too for Morris, although Morris isn't going to get the job done. Gornel is going to shut its door. But that is Trehorn through in a four. Absolutely fantastic race action as the drone's coming in to land. We get the last remnants off the drone. And uh, here we go. Oh, That's this Cuss. is going to be a brave one. He dives through the inside of the left hand of Kitching in a second place on Sean Cuss. Now, that was brave to chuck it up the inside of turn one with plenty of momentum and hope it sticks. I've seen plenty of drivers end up in the barriers. Trehorn, Trey though, Horn. he's going for third and he's there. Beautiful. Lap after lap after lap. He's just picking him off like raisins. What a fantastic race this is. For the uh, second place, of course, forget the leader, Miles Barthorpe. He's up the road by 4.21 seconds. But these here, what's the gap between them as they went through the line last time? It's about Not a second, like, I think. Eight tenths, I think it was, between all of them. And here comes Gornall having another crack at Cuss. He's already had a couple of moves. Trehorn for second position. Beautiful from Brody. Trehorn, textbook move. Now Gornall's going to get up the inside of Cuss. That's going to cost Cuss some momentum. He may lose the place to Morrison Simpson. Further back, we've got this battle between Nicole Sutherland, having got past Reese Hurd now into ninth position. So great work from Nicole. But how about these guys from second down to seventh? Trayon Kitching, Cuss, Gornall, Morris Simpson. Brilliant racing. Gornall now in front of Sean Cuss, as we know, in fourth place, tucked up behind his teammate, Archie Kitching. But Brody Trayhorn from the eighth row of the grid is now second. He's Absolutely. not the English champion for nothing. Absolutely fantastic race action, got to say. This circuit, although it's one of the shorter circuits on the calendar, as we said earlier, it's a great circuit, Jake, because there's lots of overtaking on it. And if you're a racing driver, that's what you want opportunities to overtake and they are limitless at this circuit it seems. I love Clay Pigeon is up the inside Morris gets on the move and makes his way past Sean Cuss every time I've come to Clay Pigeon I get a great atmosphere I get great work from the locals they love their sport they love their discipline it's brilliant facilities fantastic venue the racing is always action-packed I have yet to see a dull bland race at Clay Pigeon it is one of the best circuits in the country and it's the perfect venue for the road tax festival look at Trehorn he's starting to pick away from Kitching and Gornall they continue to run in formation third and fourth but there's a little bit of a nudge coming in now from Morris Cuss and Simpson they're trying to get one over on these two they do not want to lose face from these guys up in front Trey Horn has made mincemeat of them all as he gets himself at a second place but now you know he's got five seconds deficit to Barthorpe he can't really go any further forward second is all he can hope for in this race really unless Mars Barthorpe has a mechanical difficulty which is incredibly unlikely considering his form this weekend and this season so second position looks like all Brody Trehorn is going to get but he doesn't even look like he's going to stick around for the gaggle it looks like he's going to drop him yeah he's trying to get away isn't he the man that started 15th in second now on that e-plate and then uh, the 17 Archie Kitchen comes next then Gordon on the 96 Sean Cuss now down to fifth the championship leader is that Sean Cuss in fifth uh, it's not no, anymore it's, not. it's uh, Jordan Morris in fifth and Sean Cuss down as sixth and Chris Simpson is still hovering around there in seventh place he's been there for a long time now just waiting for these guys to get into the thick of the battle but they've done it a few times and he's never quite been at the back of them enough close to the back of the exhaust of the sixth place man to really challenge for a move so he's got the pace to run with them but he's just not able to gain that momentum to get close to the back of them and take advantage of the guys jostling in front yeah, but the more they back and they allow him to get that much closer here goes course. Morris dives up the inside of Gornall that'll do nicely and that puts him in a fourth position that was a very tough move that particular hairpin you can sling that up the inside every single lap and not make the move it's a tough one because it opens on the exit and you've got to keep the power in and hope that the guy you're overtaking is going to be compliant Gornall's not compliant he dives straight back up the inside drifts both of them wide that's enough for Cust to get up the inside of Morris and he's through in a fifth place well, we love festival racing how many overtakes is this I'd have to go back and add them all up Jake I should have been noting them from the start <laughs> because we must have seen what 20 five or more at the maybe, very maybe least 30 overtakes in this race you like your racing close this is the sport for you guys great stuff from the minimax it is an amazing field miles barthorpe has made light work of these boys but there is still a great battle to come in the last minute and a half or so when you take into account that there's going to be a lap additional added on to the time so is archie kitchen close enough 
to challenge Brody Trahorn again. I'd say he will be, because if he's looked after his tyres, he's going to have a last gasp effort to get back past Brody Trahorn. He's got good assistance from his teammate there, uh, Sam Gornall. So these two are actually going to be, if they've been sensible over the last few laps and looked after the tyres, looked after the brakes. Look, he's dropping Gornall. He is going to make a bid for that second place. He's not done yet. That's right, Miles Barthorpe out front by the way, if you're Miles Barthorpe's sponsor, you can complain to him when you see him next time. Miles, slow down, don't <laughs> win by so far, we never see you. No TV time for Barthorpe, dominating out in front on his 24th lap in this Rotax uh, Minimax Festival final. This is going to be a really interesting run though for Kitching on the back of Brody Trahorn, in through the hairpin once again. Up towards Buttons they will come, named after the man who started his Formula One World Championship victory journey on this very circuit in the late 80s, early 90s. Jensen Button still regularly pops in every now and then, I'm told as well. Sure about that. <laughs> They'd like to see him here. <laughs> well, down the straight they come. He's coming Hornick next year, though, to present the trophies, Jake. Button. That is what I'm told, yeah. yes. So I've signed uh, him up. Be, you've it's signed him up. Now. Excellent. It's, now. it's all done. <laughs> Trey Horn and Kitching still very close knit together, but Trey Horn has responded to Kitching starting to make a gaggle on him. A warning, a warning's gone out most recently for Jacob Martin. He's tumbled away to 20th, so I guess you know that's enough punishment. He doesn't need any more. Round they come again into the hairpin, and actually Kitching was making a bid on Trey Horn, and now Trey Horn has picked up the pace again. So now Gornall is going to challenge his teammate for third position. We're out of time, we're into the last lap, and of course that means that there's no team orders at this stage of the race. It's whatever you want to do, go for it. And Gornall is going to go for it! He's lost it! He's actually tagged the back of his teammate under braking and spun himself out of the race. Kitchen gets away with it. What a disaster for Sam Gornall. Oh, shakes, he shakes his head, but he knows it was his teammate at the end of the day. He didn't want to take his teammate off, yeah. so decided to hit the brakes and spin himself around rather than take his teammate off. Yeah, he had no other choice. Miles Barthorpe, though, is going to clinch a dominant victory, absolutely romping to the win. Hello. He takes it. Hello, Miles Barthorpe. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen much of him all race. Brilliant victory in the Rotax Festival. It's Brody Trahorn in second, and third is Sean Cuss as a result of Kitching being slumped out wide there. Jordan Morris in fourth, Kitching in fifth place from Chris Simpson. Then it's Tyler, Sam Gornall who recovers, Rhys Hurd and Nicole Sutherland rounds out the top ten. Not a single front-faring penalty to take into account either in the top ten. Proof that you can race in a festival final without penalties. Miles, you're on fire this year in the British Championships and now at the Rotax Festival. Not, not often you come to a festival and, and get three trophies and the O-plate, but a great weekend for you. Uh, just talk us through your weekend. Yeah, just tried to be as quick as we could. We knew we were going to be good because Wessex Challenge, we were on pace with everyone, so just did the best we could. And who do you want to thank for your win? Uh, my mum, my dad, Tower Mountain, Scott and Tire Engineering, Auto Bright and the Coles. Okay, congratulations. Thanks. Slightly bland but dominant victory in the final for Miles Barthorpe. We return to the second ever Rotax Festival in part two for the junior final.